taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Danilo Restivo The Hairdresser Danilo Restivo was born during April of 1972, in Sicily, Italy. At the age of 10 his family moved to the classical city of Potenza, where his father worked as a director of the National Library. Local people said that they found Danilo Restivo a little odd, eccentric, and prone to strange behavior. Later in life, Restivo's actions would give cause for more serious concerns. In 1986 he was found to have tied two children to a tree, an act that he passed off as a jape. The police did not get involved and the parents resolved the matter between themselves. Unfortunately for his victims, it would be another 25 years before Restivo would be successfully challenged by the law. His sadistic streak developed gradually and progressed over time. In 1992 he was convicted of harassing five young girls, who were his neighbors, a disturbing trait which would run through all of his crimes. Also in 1992, 23-year-old Angela Campo Chiaro had a 10 centimeters lock of hair cut from her head whilst visiting a cinema. Another of Restivo's traits had manifested itself, his hair fetish. There was just something about woman's hair that meant he had to cut it. Around this time a number of women in Italy complained of being targeted in this way. If there was one group of people who did know Restivo had a serious psychological problem, it was probably the military. He was medically examined at the point of joining up for national service, and army doctors stated that he had strange attitudes towards sexual behavior. Thus he was turned down. It would seem though, that there was little challenge made to Restivo over his increasingly worrying mental state. People either didn't see, or didn't understand his actions, with some possibly choosing to ignore them completely. This however, would be unsatisfactory, as it would also leave him free to unleash his own brand of depravity and horror on at least two unsuspecting victims. On 12 September, 1993, teenager Lisa Claps went missing from her hometown of Potenza, in Italy. She had reluctantly agreed to go on a date with Danilo Restivo, mainly because she felt sorry for the bespectacled, strange young man. They had arranged to meet at the church in the center of the city. It was the last time Elisa would be seen alive. On 12 November, 2002, Heather Barnett was brutally murdered and mutilated in her own home. Her body was then discovered by her 11-year-old daughter Caitlin and her 14-year-old son Terry, when they returned home from school. Bizarrely, the killer had cut Heather's hair and placed it in her hand. In her other hand, police found hair belonging to another woman. This act although strange, appeared to be very personal to the offender. This very disturbing case of murder is one of the worst crimes ever witnessed in the small Dorset town of Bournemouth. A lone woman murdered in her home with some bizarre ritual having taken place. This meant police were soon under considerable pressure to solve the case. There was a wolf at the door and it wasn't going away. The investigation would turn out to be problematic though. There were no witnesses, no motive, and not much in the way of forensic evidence. Against this, police were convinced that the killer was sophisticated and planned in his approach, he would not be giving them many chances. All the hallmarks pointed to the fact that this was not his first crime. It would take a huge police effort to catch this clever and dangerous individual. The Heather Barnett inquiry was the most extensive, complex, and sustained investigation ever carried out by Dorset police at the time. It lasted for nine and a half years, and cost millions of pounds. During this time police collected over 700 statements. 6,200 exhibits and 7,300 documents. The mountain of evidence was huge. At first, the investigation into Heather's brutal death focused strongly on her ex-partner, David Marsh. But routine inquiries in the local area began to reveal some suspicious behavior of a neighbor, Danilo Restivo. Apparently he was quite the character. 
police and footprint evidence from the crime scene, so they asked to see Restivo's shoes, he had bleached them. That was a very strange coincidence. Concerns were raised further, when it was discovered that after an earlier visit Danila Restivo had made to Heather's home, her house keys had mysteriously disappeared. His actions were for the first time coming under the spotlight, and people weren't happy about what they were seeing. In 2004, the police investigators still found themselves without any solid leads to go on, so the Bournemouth detectives decided to visit Restivo's hometown in Italy to find out more about the Elisa Claps case. Hoping that this could be a turning point, maybe something would turn up even though he was questioned about it over 20 years before. After speaking with their Italian counterparts, it appeared opportunities to stop Restivo may have been missed during his time living there. Italian detectives had gone to his house for the clothes he was wearing on the day Lisa disappeared, but were told by his father to return with a warrant. A reasonable request, but, as it transpires, the warrant was never issued. They never returned to retrieve his clothes. This was shoddy work, even for the era. Add to this, the assumption that was made that Elisa had left the church alive, which meant it was never thoroughly searched. They believed she was somewhere else. On their return to the UK, the Dorset police made an appeal for women to come forward that had their hair cut off while traveling by bus in the Bournemouth area. Although a seemingly innocuous appeal, there was a good turnout and several women responded to it. It would appear that Restivo's hair fetish had created many victims in both England and Italy. In May of 2004, police watched Restivo at secluded locations observing or following women. On one occasion, he was stopped by officers who found weapons and disguises in his belongings. In 2008, scientists finally made a link between DNA material found on a green-colored towel recovered from Heather Barnett's house and Danila Restivo. Still it was not judged strong enough to charge him, but they were heading in the right direction. They had their man, they just needed further evidence to prove it. The major breakthrough the UK police desperately sought, came in March of 2010. A worker investigating a leak, discovered the mummified body of Elise Claps in the church in Potenza where she had met Restivo. She had never left the church alive. Her remains had been hidden in the loft beneath a pile of old tiles for all those years. Although macabre, Another piece of the puzzle had finally fallen into place for detectives. Elisa had been stabbed and more significantly, strands of her own hair had been cut from her head shortly after her death, this had then been placed in each hand. Also, locks of hair had been placed near her body. This link with Restivo's hair fetish was no coincidence. Further tests found DNA evidence which linked Restivo to Elisa. Dorset police used various methods to then construct a case against Danila Restivo. Though only identified late as a likely suspect, Danila Restivo quickly became the sole focus of their investigation. During the early stages of the investigation, Restivo had attempted to give an alibi for the day of the murder. In police interviews he also claimed that medical reasons had affected his memory of the key events during that time. He seemed to have an answer for all of the police's questions, albeit not very good ones. He had bleached his shoes to get rid of dirt, and when he was arrested in 2006 about hair found in his Bournemouth home, Restivo claimed it was planted there to frame him. Though they were suspicious, without proof the police could only monitor Restivo through surveillance in the hope that they would find new evidence. In 2008, a new forensic technique called leucocrystal violet, identified blood in his shoes despite the efforts to bleach the evidence away. This was a huge breakthrough and would help Bournemouth police to cement a case against the killer. In May 2011, with this now compelling forensic evidence and special permission to use evidence from the reopened Italian investigation, the Bournemouth police were finally able to arrest Danila Restivo for Heather's murder. They had finally got their man. Although he cited poor memory, 
his attempts to cover his tracks by bleaching the clothes that he wore during the murder, and his defense of the hair being planted in his house, were no answer to the mounting evidence. This meant Danilo Restivo was charged with murder. It had taken nearly a decade, but in June 2011, Heather Barnett's family finally had what they had waited for, Danilo Restivo was on trial for the horrendous murder of their devoted mother. Heather Barnett had been murdered in cold blood, she had been struck several times on the head with a blunt, hammer-like object, and her body was then mutilated. Callously and without remorse, Danilo Restivo denied all knowledge of Heather's killing and pleaded not guilty to murder. Presenting the prosecution's case, Michael Boscusi told the court that Restivo had planned Heather's murder, visiting her at her flat to inquire about curtains shortly before her death. Heather had been left so concerned that Restivo had stolen a spare set of her house keys during this visit, that she even wrote to his fiance now wife, asking if he had found them. These actions clearly showed his premeditation. The prosecution case called several expert witnesses who explained crucial evidence regarding blood and DNA analysis, as well as presenting the findings of the regular surveillance work. Restivo was seen watching women a lot, a real lot, certainly bordering on obsession. A search of his car uncovered a knife a balaclava and other weapons. The officer leading the surveillance described this as a murder bag. This level of planning and intention would appear to be damning. Making legal history in the UK, the judge allowed evidence of the 1993 disappearance of 16-year-old schoolgirl Elisa Claps in the southern Italian town of Potenza, and the subsequent discovery of her remains in March 2010, to be heard. The jury were then told of the numerous similarities between the murder of Elisa Claps and Heather Barnett. They were much too similar to be coincidence, especially when given the proximity of the defendant during both crimes. In his defense, Restivo claimed that a host of medical reasons resulted in his memory of key events being poor. Explaining to the court, he said this was why he had refused to answer critical questions from Dorset detectives as well as why several of his statements appeared to change over time. He was merely a befuddled bystander. Prosecutor Mr. Bose, said the defendant had told lie upon lie upon lie. His final words to the jury were damning, there is a reason that all the evidence points to him. It is because it is him. The jury took less than five hours to find Anila Restivo guilty of Heather Barnett's murder. In November of 2011, a court in Italy tried Restivo for the murder of Elisa Claps. He was still serving his sentence in a British prison at the time, though he was found guilty in his absence and sentenced to 30 years in prison. Danilo Restivo has now also been linked to three more unsolved murders in Southern Europe. The list will possibly grow longer over time.